what's up everybody and uh merry christmas eve um i wanted to record this yesterday but i just did not have the energy to do it because like honestly i kind of like took a really extended nap um as you can see i'm home and i wanted to shoot this in this angle so you can see this side of my room so there you go <laughs> uh, some um, interesting things here, but this is where my bed is, where you would normally see from this perspective. My bed's like here, so this is what it looks like from this side. So, um, maybe, I mean, if you guys are interested, I can, um, make a video of my room. It's not that big. It really isn't. Um, but... There's a lot of stuff on my walls, so I guess that's the most interesting thing. I have a lot of stuff, but I mean, if I film it during the winter break, it's gonna look really messy. Because, um, as you know, I'm going to school, uh, like, in a totally different city. It's about six, seven hours away from here. So I didn't bother unpacking. <laughs> so there's, like, luggage and a big, like, footlocker with my clothes and like a couple bags of laundry that I still need to do but it's not like clothes it's like sheets and towels and junk but anyway that's not the purpose of this video so um hopefully I'll have another thing uh for you guys for Christmas so what I wanted to do was this, this is like I said I wanted to record this yesterday but I didn't um, I wanted to make a follow-up video on my, uh, Silent Hill 2 review. Um, I rewatched it a couple times, and there was stuff, there was things, other things I wanted to complain about that I completely forgot to mention, but, uh, I won't mention it here, because uh, that's not the focus of this video at all. But... I do want to leave an annotation to, of course, Twin Perfect's uh, channel, because uh, they had a long podcast, uh, a Silent Hill 2 movie, and uh, of course they urged everyone not to go buy it on DVD, because it was bad. And I know, like I said, I know some people that said it was good, and then I heard some people that said that it was bad. Um... I let my friend borrow the first Silent Hill movie, the one that I saw the movie with, because he's never seen it before, and he said the first one was definitely better than the second one. Um, it kind of seems like the people that I've seen reviews of the first one seem to like the first one better than the second, from what I've seen. Not everybody has followed up with the second one that I know of, but uh, I definitely think you guys should check out the their podcast and if you have a chance I said in the last video to look at the if you're interested in the whole history backstory whatever of the franchise it's there and I think they're uh, working on trying to get a downpour thing going on um, so the first movie I thought about actually like doing a type review but I'm like, I really don't want to review it. It was, I really wanted to do a video of what, like, I realized after watching it again. Now, me watching it, this isn't like the first time or the second time I've seen this movie. I actually own the movie. Um, I, I, um, I guess I'll rewind just a bit. Long time ago, my best friend and I, we really, really love Silent Hill. So, we're trying to beat all of the games to, I guess, to the best that we can. Um, at the moment, we only beaten the first one and the third one, and we're working on the second one in Origins. Um, but I'm not always here to play with her or whatever. So, we knew when we were first getting into Silent Hill, like, really get into it, we found out that they were making a movie some time ago, and after some years passed, finally made a movie. We were so excited. We were gonna cosplay. She was gonna be Heather and I was gonna be Vincent. Uh, we never did get to do that, which is a disappointment, but I know 
I don't know if she still wants to be Heather or not, but I definitely still want to be Vincent one day. Just to, you know, cosplay, even though I know, I'm sure not many people actually know who I'm dressed up as, because his costume isn't that, you know, flamboyant or extravagant or anything. Uh, it's rather plain, if you've ever seen Vincent. Um, but uh, anyway, we were really excited, and we were supposed to go see it, like I said, in cosplay, but like the first day, but we couldn't because uh, down here on the island we have Beach Party Weekend, but I think that's died out now. A bunch of people from out of town come and, and go on the beach and be obnoxious and annoying and run amok all around. It's nuts. I've never been to it, don't want to, but uh, I digress. Anyway, so we saw it a little later after things kind of died down. Um, I saw it once with, I forgot who I saw it with. I'm sure it was like a friend or something. I saw the movie. Then I saw it a second time in theaters with my best friend, and I think maybe another friend too. And we were all really pleased with it. It was really good. Well, we thought it was good, like really good. And so I was like, I'm definitely going to buy this movie. And I bought it, and I watched it, and I was like, you know, there are problems with this movie. It's not terrible or anything. It's not the worst of the worst, but it could have been better. And now that I'm older, and now that I've like heard what people had to say about the movie, and especially watching Twin Perfect's like in-depth analysis dissection of the franchise and the movie, made me want to rewatch it again. Especially after seeing the second movie, because I hadn't seen it in a really in a while. So I I watched it yesterday, and I watched the bonus features because. I hardly do that, but now, like, since I had to, I was in a film analysis class and I had to write papers on movies, uh, I ended up watching bonus features because I thought it would help me, like, make sure that my interpretation of the movie matched the director's vision and whatnot because I want to do directing. And so, and since I heard these things from Twin Perfect side about, you know, the director claiming that he's a big Silent Hill fan and he's played the games and he obviously didn't and they had little snippets of him talking and how they had to rechange how they had to change the story, like the characters, they had to like all of uh, Sean Bean's parts or just add it like not maybe maybe not last minute or anything. But at first, the director wanted an all-female cast. Now, it was blanketed as a, well, I want to do an all-female cast because, you know, it'd be good for gearing the women or whatever. But it was really the director being like, I want to see sexy women be badass in a movie. Sexist reason. And I'm not like some hardcore feminist or anything, but I think that's a dumb reason. So, that's like me, like, getting a bunch of hot guys and, like, not adding any women in it. I guess I'm like, I just want hot guys in the movie. Who cares about women? So, so that's why his part seemed really out of place when you watch the movie. Because it's like, oh, well, we really don't need this. But that's why. Because it was one of those last minute things of okay so we gotta add a male character in there and he could have avoided this if he just stuck with the first game because the first game main character is a man but as proof if you look in the commentary he says that inside that Harry is actually a woman inside because he's caring and nurturing and men cannot be caring and nurturing which is annoying and I took a gender class this semester so these little things now stick out a lot more I'm more aware and I'd like I want to pick on them even more now so like I said not a hardcore feminist or anything but I gotta notice these things and I want and since I want to do film I want to change I want to improve so this is one thing. I I don't know why. I guess he thought, oh, men, yeah, men can't be caring and nurturing, which is strange because I'm like, the game proved that men can be caring and nurturing. Like he's raising his daughter all by himself. There's nothing strange about that. There are single fathers in this world. It's reality. It's not like some 
fantasy fictitious thing that never happens but it does so that explains that and <sighs> there are problems with this movie like I said but they're comparing it to the second one they're quite minimal they're very small like things compared to the second one the second one like okay if you look at the first one it's like okay if I take this scene out and this scene out then there's some improvement here like the whole beginning part of the movie with the explanation of Sharon having these dreams of her yelling silent heel silent heel all that part I would have just chopped all of that out and just started at them driving towards Silent Hill which would reflect the game because the first part just seems psh, unnecessary so that's one thing in this there, so there's parts in the movie where you can take scenes out especially like all of Sean Bean's parts like you don't need, you really don't need these so unnecessary but in Silent Hill 2 you can't do that like if you take a scene out I mean it still wouldn't make sense if you even leave it in it doesn't make sense so the whole movie is a complete unnecessary mess see there's no fixing you have to scrap all of that and just start from the beginning Silent Hill 1 you have some to work with and you can fix it so there's hope in the first one so I figured out the root of the problem with the first movie so I'll start with the pros the pros of the thing that I noticed that was the, that were good choices this is from watching the movie and all the bonus features was the casting choices good I I like the casting choices a lot. Uh, even though I don't like the changes they made with the characters, like uh, Dahlia being this sympathetic mother type and having this Christabella person, and Rose being the main character instead of a man, and having this stupid I forgot what his name was. Her husband. He's completely unnecessary. And having a a less a have like I having the girl have like these three different parts this share and Alessa and like this devil person or whatever okay the characters were lame but they they did have good actor casting choices so I'll give them that the actors were good they seemed to really enjoy it they really liked the material especially uh even more props to those who you could not see what their real faces look like like the people that played the creatures so good good for them uh, other thing was of course the creatures they were very good I give them loads and loads of props and respect for not doing CGI but using real people for the creatures that was that was interesting to watch and with that having a choreographer choreograph the movements of the creatures that was really interesting to watch and I'm, I'm making a, I made a mental note in my in my head that I know everyone's sick of remakes but sometimes some remakes are necessary example the Hulk the Incredible Hulk the first movie sucked second one was good so hopefully I will be able to remake Silent Hill and give the, the good vision for those who love Silent Hill and those who love horror movies, but I'm definitely keeping in mind to get a choreographer to choreograph the creature's movements because I really, I really like that. That was that was something different. Uh, the sets it was really interesting watching how they built the sets. The settings were good, and I mentioned in my Silent Hill 2 review is that you don't get to even though the sets were good in the second one too, but you never got to indulge yourself in the atmosphere of the where the character is like you did in the first one there they definitely did good with that part with trying to immerse you into the environment like you would in the game and even the director said it was scary but the thing is is that the first movie wasn't I don't know if it was because of I what because I'm desensitized and I watched a lot of, I watch a lot of horror movies but there are horror movies that have scared me 
This one wasn't that scary to me. But they didn't do jump scares like the second one, because that's all their scares were, were a bunch of jump scares. First one didn't have jump scares. It was more of a an environmental you're supposed to be losing yourself into this character, but it doesn't quite make it there like the game does. So and maybe it's because you have like Sybil or Anne with Rose and in the game you have a more of a feeling of isolation because it's just Harry or it's just Heather. You don't have you don't have someone following you around. So uh so I'll give them for sets. Sets were good, environments were good. They was a lot of work, definitely. Um, what else? The acting was pretty good, even though the subject matter was terrible, but the acting was good. They, they all seemed believable and stuff, uh, although, you know, there were some choices that were kind of odd, like, uh, Sybil's sacrifice, and like, uh, why? But I think a lot of people think that. Um, what else? Uh, I guess I could say the music was good, but most of the music was from the game. It was from Akira, Yama, Yamaoka, anyway, so... Even though they mismatched all the, the music from, like, the third game, which was odd, and they put it in, like, not the right places, but, you know, the music was good and made me feel happy. And yeah, my best friend, too. So, the problem. Where, where are the problems? If it isn't the setting and the creatures... And the casting and the acting, if it wasn't that, where, where is the problem? The problem lies with story and the director. The story is a complete mess. They keep emphasizing in the bonus features that they are trying to stay true to the game, bring an essence from the game to the movie, but they end up changing so much stuff and then they have to explain it. Less so than the second one, because the second one changed it even more. They're like, uh, so we're pretty much kind of changing what we said in the first movie. So we have to explain stuff, and I don't like people explaining things to me all the time. I just wanted to, like, I want to show. Just, just show me. Don't, don't explain. Just, just do it. Um, if you've seen... Avatar, the last airbender movie, I heard they did a lot of explaining over the fighting scenes or stuff. I've no, I never seen it, but that's what I heard. So, explaining sucks. Don't explain. Um, so I have problems with the story because, yes, it, it doesn't go with the game whatsoever. It's completely different, but, um, uh, I guess I'll link this in the description box. Uh, one person's review that I saw on the movie with the whole the witch burning thing. She was saying, she pointed out, and I didn't even think about it. She pointed out that this was, they, they were accusing people of witches and witchcraft and stuff and having witch burnings. And this was in the 70s. Sounds kind of odd. You would think, most people would think witch burning like way later than the 70s. Think of, like, the Scarlet Letter. So, Salem Witch Trials. I think that far back. Not the 70s. When I think of the 70s, I think of hippies. And free love. Not war. Um, but, there's a lot of story problems. Um, and of course, yeah, the unnecessary Sean Bean things. This is just sort of, okay, why would they do this? What is the point of all of this? And mostly, I, a uh, thing I really noticed when I rewatched it, not yesterday, but before, like the first time I rewatched it at home, was the ending. I'm like, okay, I don't know how they're gonna make a sequel out of that because it looks so confusing. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. I had a Wikipedia of that because I'm like, uh, what happened at the end? Um,. As they explain it in the second one, kind of, sort of, loosely, and very sloppily, but they, they do. Um, so, 
The biggest problem with the movie is the director. Chris already mentioned the whole casting thing with the whole female sexist thing. But he... He talked a lot of BS during the common, the bonus features. It's like, I re the game is so scary. I want to put all this atmosphere in. I understand the fans. I listen to the fans and I give them what they want and blah, 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 blah. But the only thing I can understand what he's like giving the fans is, you know, oh, good, look, I gave you Silent Hill movies, see? And, oh, look, I threw in Pyramid Head, too, but he didn't really get it. Because, um, reiterating things from Twin Perfect, of course, but I, I totally agree with them. With, uh, saying that Alyssa is an evil person and she's, she's full of hate and this is all a curse and she's trying to get revenge and stuff. Which isn't really the case. It's more of she's in pain. And it, this whole nightmarish world is a complete accident. This isn't revenge. And it didn't really make sense that having this devil person and I, and not use utilizing certain characters or giving that feeling of isolation like the game does. If he really understood the game, these like really big problems that would have made it scary would have been in there. But uh, I don't know. Uh, also, I re while rewatching my Silent Hill 2 review, um, I I saw the question of if anybody else was confused by the first movie that has not played the game, and I still raise that question to you guys: Were you confused? when you watch the first movie if you haven't played the game or aren't completely familiar with the franchise like the whole story aside from you know most people know it's someone is stuck in a town and it's like there's something wrong he's looking for his kid or whatever whichever storyline of whichever game um also I would like to add the question of were you confused in the second movie because that seems the most confusing than the first. At least the first had something going with it going on for it I guess like I said but the second one was there's no hope of saving. So um I knew this was going to be pretty long but I just felt really strongly about this franchise and of course movies because that's what I want to do and I believe there is hope for a good video game movie I really really do but I think the problem with the directors who uh, make these video game movies excluding you bull because I think he's just he just likes trolling people I really, really do. I hate him. But aside from him, <laughs> I think everyone else tries too hard to cater to the fans that they lose the essence of the game. Like, they'll be like, look, we added this, so, so we did good, right? Like, I had problems with Tomb Raider. It's like, oh, look, see, we made her wear the braid, and she's... She's kick ass. She's growing. She's running around caves, and she has pistols, but they don't capture the essence of Tomb Raider. Or look, we added all these extra characters to Mortal Kombat Annihilation. <laughs> We're doing good, right? Uh, no. And that's how Silent Hill Two felt like. It's like, look, we we added all these things in here. The Mega, the Metatron, the Red Shoe. Heather, Douglas, Pyramid Head some more, because everybody loves Pyramid Head, and nurses. Stop giving us fan service. If you want to make a good video game movie, I think you the first focus of this movie should be how to make a good movie. And... Sadly, Hollywood is thinking of how can we leech money from gamers? 
So, because we all know, it's like, oh, you know, it looks promising, and we really love this game, and we want to, you know, go out and see it, but it's gonna suck, because they, they, they don't understand it. They put having a good movie, like, at the bottom of the list, and have the priority of how much fan service can we shove into an hour and a half, or however long the movie is. And that that's the problem. Stop stop trying to cater to the fans because you're you're trying too hard and it's not coming off sincere. This is like a relationship, guys. <laughs> so this is to all those people who are making video game movies. Stop trying to shove all this fan service into a movie and not have a good movie. Your first priority is to have a good movie. And then second is to re is to it, go, it ties with the first, which is to research your source material. This is like making historical movies. This is like making book adaptations. You research the primary source and you understand it and then you execute so I hope in the future that I will be able to make a Silent Hill movie that will make fans happy I know it is possible and I know the problems with it and I know what good I can take from the first one the most to use in my remake in the future one day and I know how to fix their problems too. So, and I understand the fans, and and I might have to take something from something Twin Perfect knows that the whole Konami doesn't know Silent Hill franchise anymore. I, I would like if they're still alive. I would like to talk to those original creators who understand and perfected Silent Hill. So, um. I would like to hear you guys' comments on, I guess, not just Silent Hill and the franchise and the movies, but just about video game movies in general. Do you think there's a, it's possible for video games to have a good movie? Um, do you agree with me that I think they should stop trying to cater to the fans so much because it's coming off disingenuine? Um, Leave comments, and uh, I guess if you ever have any rant topics or anything for me to talk about, you can always leave those too. And as I said earlier, hopefully I'll have a video for you guys tomorrow on Christmas. So, uh, if not, uh, say Merry Christmas now. <laughs> and hopefully I'll have some good things for you guys coming up. Uh, thank you for bearing with me through this really long video. Uh, hope you guys have a wonderful night, evening, morning, day. Uh, peace guys, and I love you all, just so you know. Bye. <laughs>